Hi and welcome to part 2 of the video on operating system interview questions and answers from careerright.com. Question number 1. When does page fault error occur? It occurs when a page that has not been brought into main memory is accessed. Explain thrashing. In virtual memory system, thrashing is a high page fault scenario. It occurs due to under allocation of pages required by a process. The system becomes extremely slow due to thrashing leading to poor performance. What are the basic functions of file management in OS? The basic functions of file management in an OS are creation and deletion of files and directories, support of primitives for files directories manipulation, backing up of files on storage media, mapping of files onto secondary storage. Explain thread. It is an independent flow of control within a process. It consists of a context and a sequence of instructions for execution. What are the advantages of using threads? The main advantages of using threads are no special communication mechanism is required. Readability and simplicity of program structure increases with threads. System becomes more efficient with less requirement of system resources. What are the disadvantages of using threads? The main disadvantages of using threads are 1. Threads cannot be reused as they exist within a single process. 2. They corrupt the address space of their process. 3. They need synchronization for concurrent read-write access to memory. What is a compiler? A compiler is a program that takes a source code as an input and converts it into an object code. During the compilation process, the source code goes through lexical analysis, parsing and intermediate code generation, which is then optimized to give final output as an object code. What is a library? It is a file which contains object code for subroutines and data to be used by the other program. What are the advantages of distributed system? The advantages of distributed system are 1. Resources get shared 2. Load gets shared 3. Reliability improves 4. Provide a support for inter-process communication What is a device driver? It is a software module that lives within the kernel and is a software interface for a hardware device. Usually, there is one device driver for a hardware device. Device drivers are mainly of following types. A. Block device drivers B. Character device drivers C. Network device drivers and D. Pseudo device drivers What does the bit size of a CPU denote? It denotes the number of bytes of information a CPU can access from RAM at the same time. What is RTOS? RTOS is Real-Time Operating System. It is intended to serve application requests real-time, which means it should be able to process data as it comes in without buffering delays. The key factors in a real-time operating system are A. Minimal interrupt latency B. Minimal thread switching latency What is interrupt latency? The time between the generation of an interrupt by a device and servicing of the device is known as interrupt latency. Many operating system devices are serviced soon after the interrupt handler of the device is executed. The effect of interrupt latency may be caused by the interrupt controllers, interrupt masking and the methods that handle interrupts of an operating system. What is the use of priority inheritance? Priority inheritance eliminates the problem of priority inversion. When one or more high priority jobs are blocked by a job, the original priority assignment is ignored and execution of critical section of jobs with highest priority is performed. The job returns to the original priority level soon after executing the critical section. This is the basic idea of priority inheritance protocol. What is spin lock? In a loop, a thread waits and repeatedly checks until the lock becomes available. This type of lock is called a spin lock. The lock is a kind of busy waiting as the thread remains active by not performing a useful task. Differentiate between a process and a program. A program is a set of instructions 
that are to perform a designated task whereas the process is an operation which takes the given instructions and performs the actions as per the code called execution of instructions a process is entirely dependent on a program a process is a module that executes modules concurrently they are separately loadable modules whereas the program performs a task directly related to an operation of a user like word processing executing presentation software etc explain physical memory physical memory is the only memory that is directly accessible to the cpu cpu reads the instructions stored in the physical memory and executes them continuously the data that is worked upon will also be stored in physical memory in uniform manner what is the difference between socket and pipe a socket is a part of the osi model that enables communication between different layers whereas pipes are used in processing in the cpu communication in socket is bidirectional while it's unidirectional in pipes where would you recommend the use of ntfs i would recommend the use of ntfs where users have professional grade it admin including backup users need to hide data more than they need to salvage it applications require files over 4g in size hard drive exceeds the 137g barrier would you recommend the use of ntfs on consumer pcs why no i would not recommend the use of ntfs on consumer pcs because it has no maintenance os to take care of data recovery manual checking and repairing of file system structure and malware scanning and cleaning comment on ram ram is a volatile memory it is a read write memory where all program information is stored it loses all the information as soon as the power supply is cut what do you know about rom rom read only memory is a permanent memory information is stored permanently in rom the data cannot be modified or even if possible it is done very slowly and with great difficulty access speed with rom is less here bios holds the information to boot the system what is dram or dram in which form does it store data dram also called as dynamic random access memory it is a kind of read write memory dram has cells made up of capacitor and a transistor where the data resides capacitors need to recharge for every couple of milliseconds the process of recharging these cells causes performance slowdown of dram as compared to speedier ram it is comparatively cheaper tell us something about cache memory cache memory is a ram where the most recently processed data is stored cpu can access the data in cache faster than it can access data in regular ram when the microprocessor starts processing the data it first checks in cache memory the size of each cache block ranges from 1 to 16 bytes every location has an index that corresponds to the location which has data to access this index is known as address what is job scheduling what are its various types job scheduling is an activity to decide the time for a process to receive the resources they have requested various types of job schedulings are first come first served round robin scheduling shortest job first priority scheduling differentiate between primary storage and secondary storage primary memory storages are temporary whereas the secondary storage is permanent primary memory is expensive and smaller whereas secondary memory is cheaper and larger primary memory storages are faster whereas secondary storages are slower primary memory storages are connected to cpu through data buses whereas the secondary storages are connected through data cables tell us something about scheduling algorithms the scheduling algorithms decide which processes in the ready queue are to be allocated to the cpu for execution they can be classified into following types first come first sub scheduling algorithms shortest job first scheduling algorithm shortest remaining time algorithm non preemptive priority scheduling algorithm preemptive priority scheduling algorithm 
റൗണ്ട് റോബിൻ ഷെഡ്യൂളിംഗ് അൽഗോറിതം ഹയസ്റ്റ് റെസ്പോൺസ് റേഷ്യോ നെക്സ്റ്റ് അൽഗോറിതം മൾട്ടി ലെവൽ ഫീഡ്ബാക്ക് ക്യൂ ഷെഡ്യൂളിംഗ് അൽഗോറിതം മൾട്ടി ലെവൽ ക്യൂ ഷെഡ്യൂളിംഗ് അൽഗോറിതം വൈ ഇസ് റൗണ്ട് റോബിൻ അൽഗോറിതം കൺസിഡേർഡ് ബെറ്റർ ദെൻ ഫസ്റ്റ് കം ഫസ്റ്റ് സെർവ്ഡ് അൽഗോറിതം ദ ഫസ്റ്റ് കം ഫസ്റ്റ് സെർവ്ഡ് അൽഗോറിതം ഇസ് ദ സിംപ്ലസ്റ്റ് ഷെഡ്യൂളിംഗ് അൽഗോറിതം ദ പ്രോസസ്സസ് are assigned to the cpu on the basis of their arrival time in the ready queue since it is non preemptive once a process is assigned to the cpu it will run till completion since a process takes the cpu till it is executed it is not very good in providing good response times it can make other important processes wait for long on the other hand the round robin algorithm works on the concept of time slice or also known as quantum in this algorithm every process is given a predefined amount of time to complete the process in case a process is not completed in its stipulated time then it is assigned to the next process waiting in queue in this way a continuous execution of processes is maintained which is not possible in case of first come first served algorithm explain how a copying garbage collector works and how can it be implemented using semi spaces the copying garbage collector basically works by going through live objects and copying them into a specific region in the memory this collector traces through all the live objects one by one this entire process is performed in a single pass any object that is not copied in memory is garbage the copying garbage collector can be implemented using semi spaces by splitting the heap into two halves each half is a contiguous memory region all the allocations are made from a single half of the heap only when the specified heap is half full the collector is immediately invoked and it copies the live objects into the other half of the heap in this way the first half of the heap only contains garbage and eventually is overwritten in the next pass how does reference counting manage memory allocated objects and when can it fail to reclaim objects reference counting augments every object with a count of the number of times an object has been referenced this count is incremented every time a reference to that object is made also every time a reference is destroyed the reference is decremented this process is repeated till the reference count becomes zero Once the reference count of an object reaches 0 the object can be reclaimed in this way reference counting systems can perform automatic memory management by keeping a count in every object any object that does not have a reference count can be considered to be a dead object and that memory can be reclaimed the reference counting method can fail to reclaim objects in case of cyclic references There are no concrete ways to avoid this problem and it is always suggested to create an architecture that does not use a circular reference differentiate between a semaphore wait signal and a condition variable wait signal let us first see semaphore wait signal they can be used anywhere except in a monitor the wait function does not always block its caller here the signal function increments the semaphore counter and can release a process If the signal function releases a process the released and the caller both continue now let us see condition variable wait signal it can only be used in monitors the wait function here always blocks its caller the signal function can either release a process or it is lost as if it never occurred on signal releasing a process either the caller or the released continues but not both at the same time What are the advantages of segmented paging over pure segmentation? In broad terms, paging is a memory management technique that allows a physical address space of a process to be non-contiguous. Segmented paging has a certain set of advantages over pure segmentation such as 1. Segmented paging does not have any source of external fragmentation. Since a segment existence is not restricted to a contiguous memory range it can be easily grown and does not have to adjust into a physical memory medium with segmented paging the addition of an offset and a base is simpler as it is only an append op operation 
instead of it being a full addition operation when does bilady's anomaly occur the bilady's anomaly is also called as fifo anomaly it is a situation in which the number of page faults increases when additional physical memory is added to a system this anomaly arises in some algorithms that implement virtual memory the virtual memory allows programs larger than the physical memory space to execute an algorithm suffers from this problem when it cannot guarantee that a page will be kept when a small number of frames are available an optimal algorithm would not suffer from this problem as it replaces the page not used for the time the anomaly occurs when the page replacement algorithm removes a page that will be needed in the immediate future this anomaly is also stated to be unbounded what are the pros and cons of using circuit switching for which type of applications should it be implemented the primary advantage of using circuit switching is that it ensures the availability of resources that is it preserves the network resources required for a specific transfer prior to the transmission takes place by doing so it ensures that no packet would be dropped and the required quality of service is delivered the disadvantage of using circuit switching is that it requires a round trip message to set up a reservation by doing so as it provisions the resources ahead of the transmission it might lead to the suboptimal use of resources circuit switching can be implemented for applications that have constant demand for network resources for longer periods of time what problems are faced during the implementation of a network transparent system a designer primarily faces two major problems while implementing a network transparent system the first problem is to make all the processors and storage devices to appear transparent on the network this implies that the distributed system should appear as a single centralized system to the users using the network there are two solutions to it the andrews file system and the nfs system both these file systems appear as a single file system to the user whereas in reality it may be a distributed one the second issue is regarding the user mobility the designer would want any user to connect to the entire system rather than to a particular machine 